Step number two, stop outsourcing your happiness. Now, what do I mean by that? Some of us, we keep waiting for somebody else to make us happy. We keep waiting for somebody else to do something for us. I have a news flash for you. People do not wake up in the morning trying to figure out how to make you happy. I want, you to get, I want you to get that in your head going into 2016. You keep waiting for somebody to come along and make you happy. You better make yourself happy. It's your job to make you happy. No one else's job. And don't outsource it to anyone else. Because you cannot outsource your happiness. The next level means identifying things and people in life that inspire you and cause you to move ahead. You see, you need to find people around you who inspire you, who, who encourage you, who cause you to dream bigger, to see better, to move higher. You need to expose yourself to people who've already been where you are. That's the best lesson you can get in life. And you see, Jesus knew how to get rid of level one people. You see, there's some level one people in, in your life, but everybody in this room, you say you want to get to the next level. We have some, we want, we have some people in here who want to get to the next level, right? So if you want to get to the next level, you got to make some hard choices. You see, Jesus had a group of people. If you, look, if you read the Bible in John chapter 6, Jesus said this. The Bible says that he fed the 5,000 and then he went out in the boat and he went to talk to the people. And right after that, a whole group followed him. And you know what he told the group? Now, you know, if, if it was us, we were saying, boy, I large now, man. I got a whole crew following me. Die them in good shape now, man. You know, <laughs> I large and in charge. Jesus looked at them. Jesus said, you know what? Y'all are following me for fish and bread and entertainment. He said, y'all want free, free fish, free bread, and y'all want to see miracles. Y'all want to sit back and say, man, turn on the TV. Let's see that when he fall down. See that when he jump up. But Jesus said, uh-uh. He said, if you ain't ready to, to drink my blood and eat my flesh, you can't go with me. And the Bible says that all of the crew who was following him, they left. And the disciples look at him and they say, man, Jesus, he was a cold brethren, you know. So how you could tell the people these hard things? You know what Jesus said? Jesus looked at them, Jesus say, you are going to leave me too? And they say, you know what Peter said to them? Peter said, Peter said, Jesus, but to whom shall we go? So Jesus said, well, let's roll. And you see, that's the kind of people you need in your life. You need people who are ready to roll with you. You need a ride or die. <laughs> there are two ways in life to learn. You can learn from mentors or you can learn from mistakes. But you see, if you learn from mistakes, it costs you a whole lot more than learning from mentors. That's why you always have to find people who've been where you want to go. Because if you find people who've been where you want to go, it gives you some free lessons. Mistakes means that you have to keep paying for stupid things that you do. So in life, you need mentors. You learn from mentors or mistakes, but you choose which, which route you want to take. There are some people, there are mentors all around you, and you are choosing mistakes. You won't get to the next level by choosing mistakes. Some people say the best teacher is experience. That's not true. The best teacher may be experienced, but, but it's other people's experience. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says this. It says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. What I want you to notice is, the Bible says he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think, but it's according to something. It says, according to the power that works in us. So when I said your happiness is your responsibility, God said, whatever he does is going to come because of what's on the inside of you. When you have the Holy Spirit, you already have the power in you. And he comes to activate that power. That's how things happen. God does things based upon what's on the inside of us. That's why Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. You cannot import power from the outside. 
You see, some of us, we don't have anything on the inside and we want to import some power and we say, you know, um, I pray and, and come and do this for me. But you see, God said he works according to the power that's already in us that he deposited in us. You cannot import power from the outside. The power needs to be a permanent resident called the Holy Spirit. And you see, if that power is on the, in, in the inside of you, then he can do exceedingly above everything that you can ask or think. Anybody with me? Number three, if it's not your job, it's time to change the uniform. If it's not your job, it's time to change the uniform. What am I talking about? Some of us, we need to change our clothes in 2016. You need to stop wearing the uniform if it's not your job. When you see this person, what do you think? You say, that's the police, right? And what do the police do? Police help you and protect you. Well, if you are not a policeman, then you shouldn't be wearing that job. I mean, wearing that, that uniform. There are some people who say, I'm a born-again believer. I love God. And they're wearing this uniform right here. You know, I, a young lady, I heard a young lady said one time, you know, Pastor Dave, they calling me a hoax. So I say, well, what kind of uniform are you wearing? If you're wearing the Christmas uniform, then they're going to call you ho, ho, ho. So you need to change your uniform. Tell the person, say, change your uniform. And then some people are wearing this uniform. You know what this uniform says? Breastfeeding time. And if you're not providing milk, why are you, why are you wearing that uniform? I see a lot of young ladies going to public, going to come, come to church and they're wearing the breastfeeding uniform. So when they walk past the nursery, all the babies start crying. And they're trying to figure out what happened. Man, you need to change your uniform. If you ain't giving out milk, you need to change your uniform. And I don't know what kind of uniform this is. I'll tell you a true story. You see, sometimes you may wear a uniform for a role. So if you're acting in a play, you put on a police uniform. Okay? It's okay to wear it that time. And Manifest, who died last year, he used, he used to travel with me. And sometimes we'll travel to the States. We'll travel different places. And I told these young guys, I said, man, let me tell you a lesson that I learned. When you are traveling to the U.S., I know you are wearing these clothes for a role. You are a hip-hop singer. So you have to wear these clothes that look like the hip-hop artists because you're relating to that population. I said, that's cool. You're doing it for a role. The Bible says you, 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 you become all things to win some. So you're trying to win some, so you, you're playing the role. I said, however... When we are traveling through U.S. customs, my brother, put on your jacket, comb your hair, and look decent. Because if you're wearing the thug uniform, they're going to treat you like a thug. And so he didn't listen to me. So I walked through customs. Everything is good. He walked up behind me. The customs officer said, when was your last case? <laughs> so he looked at me and said, Pastor Dave, Man, they were asking me, when was my last case? I don't have no case. I say, yeah, but you're wearing the uniform. <laughs> you're wearing the case uniform. <laughs> Dr. Monroe used to say this. He said, dress the way you want to be addressed. Put on the uniform of where you are going. And you see, there's a physical uniform that you have to put on and a spiritual uniform that you have to put on. Ephesians. The 4 verse 17 tells us about our spiritual uniform. It says, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness, to all to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. It's, and then the scripture says that you put off. In other words, change those clothes. Change your physical clothes and change your spiritual clothes. It says that you put off concerning your former conduct. Your conduct is like clothes, you know. 
If you say you are a believer and you are wearing misconduct clothes, you're grouchy. You know, you're supposed to be a representative of Christ. And when people see you, you say, praise the Lord, brother. Glory to God. God is good. You're wearing the wrong uniform. Notify your face of who you represent. <laughs> it says concerning your former conduct. You see, when you enter this kingdom of God, you're supposed to put a smile on your face because you represent the KOG and the 242. For those of us who are watching online who don't understand what I'm saying, KOG means Kingdom of God and 242 means Bahamas, area code 242. That's where we, we represent two kingdoms. We represent the KOG and the 242. It says, concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows... What happened to my scripture? Okay. What grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. It says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on. Everybody say, put on. put on. It says, put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. So God is saying that he's given you his spirit, but you have to put on the new man. You have to put on the new clothes. So go into 2016 with some new physical clothes and some new spiritual clothes. Number four, do not allow bosses in your life who don't pay you or increase your value. You see, some of us, we have some people giving us instructions and they don't pay us. People giving you directions, but they don't make any positive contribution to your life. If you want to get to the next level, you have to get rid of people who are giving you directions, but not making any contributions. In 2016, you may need some new mentors. In fact, what you may need in 2016, you may need a new board of directors. Some of us on our board, we have Hammerhead, <laughs> Rockfish, <laughs> Turtle. <laughs> you need some lions on your board. Any lions in this place? <laughs> Appoint people to your board who add value. Your activities in 2016 need to line up with your purpose. If you say you are going somewhere, you have to act like it. You see, action outside of your purpose is like delayed suicide. There are people who die when they're 17 and we bury them when they're 55. They committed suicide a long time ago. It just came a time when they expired. You have to make sure that your actions don't cause you to commit suicide. Here's a question for you. Are you cutting the throat of your destiny with your decisions? Some of us, we're killing our destiny with our decisions. We say we, have a, we want to get to the next level. We have all kinds of dreams and, and visions. We want to pursue our purpose. We want to maximize our potential, but our decisions are cutting the throat of our destiny. Number five, and I have one more. If you want to move up, you have to look up. In life, you are uplifted by your outlook. That's why you have to be careful which direction you are, you are looking in. You have to be careful about what you are looking at. If you want to get to the next level, you have to start looking at the next level. You have to start reading next level books. You have to listen to next level sermons. You need to hang around next level people because you are uplifted by your outlook and your outlook is formed by your associations. The direction you look in determines the direction of your movement. You ever heard your parents say this? Boy, you better look where you're where you going. You ever heard that before? That's a true statement. You better look where you're going. Can you imagine if you're moving forward and you're looking back? What happens? You crash. So if you want to get to the next level, you got to look where you're going. You have to know where you're going. Keep focus on where you are going and not where you've been. Sometimes, some of us, we spend all our time looking back at what happened. And sometimes we've become experts at explaining what happened. 
Well, you see what happened to me in 2015 and, you know, the dog bit me and, you know, my mother don't like me and my cousin said something about it. Man, look here. You need to push that behind and start moving ahead. Keep focus on where you are going, not what happened to you. The disappointments of 2015, they need to be history. Hebrews chapter 12 Verse 1 says this, it says, Therefore, we are, since we are also surrounded by such a great cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking, everybody say looking. Now you see, you got to figure out what you are supposed to be looking at. It says looking unto Jesus. You see, if you want to move up, you have to look up. And the best person to look, up, look at is Jesus. Because if you look at anyone else, you're going to look at imperfection. But if you look at Jesus, you see perfection. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of God. So Jesus is the example. Jesus, he, he kept his eyes focused on the purpose, on the mission. He said, for this purpose was the Son of God made, the Son of Man made manifest. So he knew exactly where he was going. He was looking in the right direction. And now we have to look to him. Number six, so this is the last one. Remember this, what is behind us and before us or around us is not as important as what is within us. What is behind us, before us, or around us is not as important as what is in us. Now let me tell you what I'm saying. You got to pay close attention to this. Jesus made this statement. He said, the kingdom of God is within you. How many remember him making that statement? In Luke chapter 17, verse 20, he says, Now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation. He goes on to say, Nor will they say, See it here or see it there. You see, they were looking for a physical kingdom. They were talking, you know, they were, they were looking at Jesus and they were saying, Okay, he's coming to take over Rome. Jesus said, This kingdom doesn't work like that. It doesn't have a physical residence. He said, this kingdom is on the inside of you. He said, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. Everybody say it's within you. So you have to get the kingdom of God on the inside of you. And the kingdom of God, when you accept Jesus Christ into your heart, the Holy Spirit takes up residence. And Jesus made this statement. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What's within you can never be removed except by your permission. He said the kingdom of God is within you and the kingdom of God is within you and it can be moved except you give permission. So in 2016, you have to stop giving permission. Hashtag stop giving permission. First John chapter four says this. It says you are of God little children and I've overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. You have, to, you have to find your identity. You have to know who you are. It says, great is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So what's in you is more important than what's around you. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. I say it's a G thing, but it's a capital G, because the capital G is God. Every other G is a lowercase g. Jesus said, the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Now, what is violence? Now, Jesus told the disciples, he said, you know, I didn't come with a sword. I didn't come to physically inflict violence. But he said we should be violent. Am I right about that? He said we should be violent. But he's not talking about physical violence. You know what he said? This is what the dictionary says about violence. It says intensity, severity, strength, force, vehemence, power, potency, fervency, ferocity, fury, fire. You should never say please to the devil. If God tells you something is yours, you got to go get it. That's why he said the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violence is taken by force. So you have to take some action. You have to act like it's yours. I want us to stand to our feet. 2015 may have been like this for you. 
And you can make some noise if you identify with this. And for, for 2015, some of us have been ostracized. Some of us have been criticized. Some of us have been marginalized. Some of us have been mistreated. Some of us have been defeated. We've been castigated, miscalculated, discombobulated, mislabeled. So poor we couldn't afford cable. Misunderstood. Call no good. Talked about. Walked on. Lied about. Cast in the spirit of doubt. Betrayed. Dismayed. Destiny delayed. Some of us, we went through that in 2015. But here's what, what I want you to, to do in 2016. That's, that was 2015. But if you're going to take it by force, this is what you got to do in 2016. You have to decide like this. You have to decide that in 2016, you will be unbroken, outspoken, classified, original, and not a token. Extraordinary, tremendous, stupendous, remarkable, exceptional, fabulous, wonderful, phenomenal, amazing, legendary, fantabulous. Now, I want to I wanna close with... Thing. I know I know it's midnight. Don't worry about the clock and all that kind of stuff. This is this is more important than all of that. We don't need no countdown. We don't need no crystal ball. We need the kingdom of God on the inside of us. So let me tell you what you got to do in 2016. You see, they had this experiment, and they had some monkeys, and they put these monkeys in a in a, in a little room, and they had a ladder in the room, and on top of the room, that it was on top of the ladder, they had some bananas. And so what they did was, whenever the monkeys tried to get the bananas, they would receive an electric shock, and then water would be poured on them. And so the monkeys kept trying to go for the bananas, but they got shocked. And they got water poured on them. And so they were conditioned, even though they were hungry, not to get the bananas. And so then they brought in a new set of monkeys and left some of the old set of monkeys in. And the new set of monkeys came in and they went to go and walk on the ladder and before they could get to the ladder, the old monkey said, no, 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 you can't go there. Because they were conditioned. But then they had a monkey who got exposed to the kingdom of God. And this monkey entered the room and all the monkeys said, no, you can't go on that ladder. You're going to get shocked. Water is going to be poured on you. And so the kingdom of God monkey looked at them and said, That's true. And then he looked up at the bananas. He said, That's true. But give me my bananas. <laughs> and he stepped up the ladder and he grabbed the bananas. He went through the shock. He went through the water. He went through everything. He said, Give me my bananas. That's the person next to you and said, Give me my bananas. In 2016, don't let anybody talk you out of what God has for you. Amen.